A big night of gymnastics in New Jersey. Some of the big, the best teams in the country are here tonight at Jersey Mike's Arena for a February quad meet between Rutgers, Michigan, Fisk, and Southern Connecticut State. Welcome you to Piscataway, New Jersey with Crystal Chalet Norton. I'm Dom Savino. Happy to be with you for what should be a thrilling night of gymnastics featuring some of the best that the nation has to offer and an outstanding crowd of gymnastics fans. Now, Crystal, you were the head coach of Rutgers for more than 20 years. This Scarlet Knight team right now. The 25. 20 <laughs> 25, but who's counting? Right. <laughs> Yes. The, the number 39 team in the country as we see our rotation order. Rutgers will start on vaults, Michigan on bars, Fisk on beam, and Southern Connecticut State on floor. This is going to be a really exciting meet because Bev Pilaki's team is outstanding. And the last time she was here, we saw a multitude of tens, which is going to possibly be seen again as well. And I think Rutgers can do as well. Um, with their lineup as well. And Fisk is, again, it's history being made. So it's exciting to be part of that progress and showing that more gymnastics is being offered to all, all types of women. Yeah, a pretty big night. It is uh, honoring a whole bunch of things tonight uh, with this meet as well. But let's talk about some of the teams individually. You see Michigan. Let's start with Michigan because they are the number three team in the country. Rutgers, the number 39 team. The Wolverines. The best team in the country on vaults and floor. That'll be their lineup on bars. All Americans up and down the lineups. Right, and very, if you can see, all seniors. So they're, they've got a lot of experience. So you're going to see some very strong uneven bars, plus with great form and extension, which the judges want to see, and um, very good execution, and a lot of high-flying release moves. And, of course, Natalie Wojcik, uh NCAA champion, Michigan NCAA team title two years ago. Meanwhile, for Rutgers, this is a team that's a little banged up coming into this meet. Look at the at the lineups at the start of the season. They're missing five gymnasts from that list, including a few that were injured this past week. And so for Umi Salim Beasley's team, it's next woman up. Yes, it is. But again, she has depth on her team, so which is very good. And that's why when you have the large numbers, you have the other girls that are going to step up to the plate and, you know, perform. And plus it gives them experience and I, um, for the future. Hey, you saw Rutgers with their vault lineup. They have three freshmen starting it out, including one making her college debut tonight. Uh, Rutgers coming off a meet at Penn State in which we saw that next gymnast up mentality. Rutgers' Jackie Manifold, who we'll see on beam, was thrown in the lineup at the last minute. It was supposed to be an exhibition, hit a career high. Rutgers has always prided itself on its depth and its team atmosphere under Omi Selene Beasley, now in her fifth season here, and that'll be on display tonight. Yes, it will, and that's why that exhibition, um, as much as they can get in there, is vital because just like what happened with Jackie, she had to step in, but she had been exhibition, so she was ready. There was nothing wrong. She was in the crowd, so she was ready to do her job, and she did. Now, the last time Rutgers was here at home, it posted the second-best team score in program history, a 196-375. That was two weeks ago in a duel against Illinois. And as Crystal alluded to already, last time Michigan was here, the Wolverines had a run of four straight tens. Their anchor on floor, their first three on vaults. Could we see some big scores again tonight? I think we can. Um, again, it's, it's a great atmosphere. The crowd is outstanding which we knew it would be. So it's going to be a lot of, uh, lot of excitement going on. And that helps the gymnasts. So Michigan will open on bars, Rutgers on vaults. And one of the other teams here tonight, something we've talked about too, is Fisk University. They, at the start of this year, became the first HBCU, historically black college or university, to sponsor a women's gymnastics team. They're in their first year of competition. Umi Salim Beasley was a part of the uh, group that helped bring gymnastics to HBCUs. Awesome to have them here. And they have some talented gymnasts on their roster, yes, too. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They had a lot of gymnasts that had committed somewhere else. And now that they knew that they could go to an all-black college, and they, some of them did transfer. So, And um, the head coach, Kareen, is a... Brevet judge, and she lived in New Jersey for many years and coached a lot of the club programs and has done a great job with that. 
And Morgan Price is the name that a lot of people know, former five-star recruit. We'll see her only on bars later tonight. You see Fisk will open on beam, so bars will be much later on in the evening. We'll jump to them when we get there. Meanwhile, Southern Connecticut State, a Division II school. I don't know how much we'll get a chance to catch them tonight because of all the, the craziness of a quad meet, but it's a, one of the better D2 programs in the country. They routinely send players, uh, send gymnasts to the USAG uh, national meet. Yes, they have, and um, Byron is a very good head coach, and um, so he, he knows his stuff. He's been around for a long time. All right, moments away from getting going here at Jersey Mike's Arena. Again, Rutgers on vaults. Michigan will be on bars. And the big question is, will we see some big scores? Michigan already has some of the scores it wants to lock into its NQS. Rutgers has a few, looking for more. And we'll see if this Scarlet Knight blend of additions to the lineup and mainstays can put together a big score. We hope so, they, they can, but again, I mean, they've trained for this, so they're ready. And that's why you have the depth that you have. All right, right off the top for Rutgers, it will be Harmony Webster, who is one of the freshmen on this team, one of nine, part of a freshman group that was ranked as one of the best 15 in the country this year. Just her second time competing on vaults. Did so in the season opener at the Super 16 meet in Las Vegas. Earned a 9-6 there. Has exhibitioned a couple times since, and now with some of the injuries is bouncing back into the lineup. Right, and I I think she'll do fine. I mean, she just has to keep her nerves calm. But again, she's been in the lineup, and she's a very strong level 10 gymnast, so she's been in this situation before. Mostly Yurchenko fulls in the Rutgers vault lineup. We'll see Emily Lees' Yurchenko one and a half as the anchor. Here's Webster to kick it off. Okay, she had a tuck full, which is not the 9-9 start value, plus she had a never got her chest up and had a little step over the lines. And as we spoke to before, the lines are there just for visual for the judges. There, there's no deduction if they step on it, and this was something new that the coaches put into the, the uh, rules this past year just so the judges had a visual for it. <laughs> Meanwhile on bars, Abby High School, the super senior, one of a few, she's pumped up a stick to cap off her bars routine, so we'll wait on the score from her as well. So it looks like a good start for Michigan. For Rutgers, meanwhile, you're able to drop the lowest score, and that's right. the goal now. That's a goal, exactly. They they have they have six gymnasts, and you, talk, you, you do drop the lowest one, so. Well, next up for Rutgers will be Valentina Lorente Garcia, who of the freshmen has been the most frequent to appear in the lineup so far. And for Michigan on bars, we'll see Naomi Morrison up second. Lorente Garcia, the native of Virginia Beach, Virginia, had a 9-6-7-5 twice on vault so far. Okay, very nice. It's a full, so she's a 9-9 start, 9-9-5 start. A little bit of a hop, a little at the ending, and again, we talked about the sticking, and that's what we want to, you know, that's what they ultimately want to do, is stick the landing. And again, this is the more vaults you get under the belt, the better, and the more experience you have. Back to bars. Here is Morrison, a 9-8-5. Very nice release move, very nice and high, very nice clear hip to hand. Over and shoot to handstand again, no deductions. Very, very nice handstands, like, like you want to see. Clean, and that's what they're that's what they're so strong for. <laughs> very nice, nice double leg dismount. A little bit of hop on the end, but still very nice bar routine. Now Morrison season high in 9.85. The junior putting together a quality routine. And there's the double layout to end it. Yes, very nice, very stuck. Just a little bit of a hop. Now before Morrison, it was Abby High School. She earned a 9925. <laughs> That's her season, her ties her season high, I should say. For Rutgers in the third spot. It's Gabby Dildy making her college debut. Okay, again, a little bit didn't get enough height and rotation on that. Landed a little short. 
So there's going to be um, several deductions for execution on that, and as well as stepping over the lines. Well, that's the, the first vault for Dildy, who has been put in the lineup because of injuries. And so we'll wait on her score. Rutgers so far, 9-4 from Harmony Webster and a 9-7-2-5 from Valentina Lorente Garcia. So you expect the 9-4 to stay in the in this, the count now. And then the back half for Rutgers is a bit more experienced. Yes, yes it is. And unfortunately, yes, this you know, the second fault is going to be um, a little, uh, Dilly's is going to be a little bit lower simply because of her deductions that she had. Naomi Morrison, a 9-8-5, and the third gymnast up is Gabby Wilson. We got a nice half into a nice Pike Jaeger, which is an E move. Nice handstand. And again, a nice overshoot to handstand, which is a D. Again, very nice full from, however, she did have a little step, so that's going to be a two-tenths deduction that the judges have to take. And a meet that this is this close, they cannot, you know, not do it, and cannot not take the deduction. Uh, Wilson caps it off with his stick. We go back to vault. This is Maya Jones a moment ago. Big roar from her Scarlet Knights because of that. Yes, a little bit of a step that, but the height was beautiful. And the way that Gabby Wilson capped it off. Very nice step landing. A little bit of a hop, but again, half tenth to a tenth. So very nice dismount. Again, very clean. Now Wilson season high, a 9-9. For Rutgers, Maya Jones, 9-8 is her high. Her season high, that is. She's a sophomore. And so we'll wait on the score for Jones. And actually, it just popped up, 9-7-2-5. The score for Gabby Dildy in her debut, a 9-2. So Rutgers will aim to drop that with two veterans who are fresh off regionals appearances. So of course, they, everybody knows about Hannah Joyner and right. Evelyn Lee. <laughs> yes, so they're very strong vaulters, which can help the average. Joyner, one of the most prolific gymnasts in this Rutgers program history. Very and nice, it. very nice ball, very nice, nice stick, nice height, clean finish. Meanwhile, Carly Bowman is the fourth one up for Michigan on bars. Toe shoot to handstand to her double. Very nice stuck landing. A very hard dismount, and then she did it in a bonus combination as well. So it's very, very nice dismount. Take another look at some of Bowman's routine. That's a double oh, back yeah. there dismount there. Right, yeah. So. What she's doing is turning, so that's a C, and then she's going into a front double, which is an E, which is very difficult. A Bowman season high is a 9.85. Before her, it was also 9.85 for Gabby Wilson. Hannah Joyner just earned a 9.825 on vaults, and now Rutgers. Emily Lees went to regionals for vault a year ago. A Yurchenko one and a half with a 10-0 start value. It's tonight the night. Oh dear, <laughs> oh my, well that's gonna hurt. That's a five tenths, she didn't finish it around. So that's, <clears throat> plus, you know, the height wasn't there. So unfortunately, that's not going to be the score that they wanted from her tonight. Again, it is a little bit of a higher start value, value, so it may help out at least a little bit. We go back to bars, Sierra Brooks is the fifth gymnast for Michigan. Very nice Pike Yeager. Nice cast to handstands. Toe shoot to an over, shoot to a handstand. Very nice. Again, clean handstands right up there and finished. And that's where you, that's great gymnastics. And another fabulous struck landing. <laughs> nice full. Back to back sticks for Michigan on bars. And Sierra Brooks just brought the goods. Yes, she did. Very nice. A 9.95 earlier this season. Should mention, Michigan is still looking for its first 10 this year. That's why we keep saying, is tonight going to be the night? Before her, 
Her teammate Carly Bowman earned a 9.95. And so we'll wait Brooks' score. We'll get back for Natalie Wojcik in a little bit. We see a little bit of Fisk on beam. And so far the top score for Fisk, Alyssa Wiggins earned a 9.5. It's a nice, very nice um, Jainer Pike off the end, which is a C dismount, very nicely done. And there is Wojcik waiting to go on bars. Pausing for Brooks' score. Now Wojcik, a four-time Big Ten champ. Last year was on beam. One of the best-known gymnasts nationwide. A little short on the handstand. Nice release move to her overshoot, which be is a B but becomes a C because it's coming from a D element. A very nice cast handstand. Preparing for a dismount. Double A, which is again an E with a little bit of a um, hop. Now Wojcik rounds out what was a strong start to the meet for the Wolverines. Yes, they had very outstanding release moves and very nice handstands. And that's what you see in the top five in the country. Now Sierra Brooks earned a 9-9-2-5. So we wait on the score for Michigan and Wojcik to close out their go-arounds. Emily Lees, meanwhile, for Rutgers on vaults, earned a 9-3-5. So the Scarlet Knights wrap up the first rotation with a 48-1-2-5. And they'll try to rebound from there. They have three more strong events, so they can bounce back. On floor, this is Southern Connecticut State. Her nice dance leap combination, which is required. Tumbling path was a Rudy to a Sassone, which is a dance bonus combination, tumbling bonus combination of a D to an A. Now, so far, best score for Southern Connecticut State on floor is Sianna Rios' 9.75. Score is in, by the way, for Wojcik, a 9.925. So the last three gymnasts for the Wolverines all go 9.9 nine or better. They get four 9.9s nine or better on bars, and they wrap up with a starting score of 49.575. Lowest score on bars was a 9.85 as Fist wraps up another routine on beam. Strong start for the Wolverines, and uh, looking at Fisk on beam, looking for another 9.5 like Wiggins' leadoff leg. Right, very good. She had a very nice pike dismount off the end. A little bit to the side. They would like it completely off the end. Right, it's nice to see Fisk here. I know that they've got a lot of folks in the seats tonight as well. They even have two different film crews here tonight to document uh, their meet. They've been documenting their season. One of them from ESPN, the other producing a docu-series that we're going to watch out for later this year. That'll be, that's neat. And it's, it's very, you know, it's done very professionally and it, it shows that, you know, what, how well this university is doing with this pilot program for the first year. Now for Southern Connecticut State, they're on their fourth routine on floor. This is Abby Royer. Again, a Rudy to a Sison, which is a DA combination. Very nicely done. combination, which is a requirement. Okay. 
front fold to a four and a half front tuck, a little low. She didn't get enough amplitude on that. So there will be a deduction for knee bends, low landing. And again, a Rudy for a D. Now she did it in her first pass, so she will not get credit for that D, extra D, but she will have a D as her last pass, so she'll get a 10th bonus for that, what the coaches have put in. And some encouraging words from Byron Knox, who is the head coach of Southern Connecticut State, former USA national team gymnast himself, an alum of the, pro of the university. And, and so he was at Bridgeport before he has taken over by Southern Connecticut. So again, Fisk and Southern Connecticut State wrapping up this first rotation. You saw Rutgers waiting after their go on vault of 48-125. Top score was Hannah Joyner's 9-8-2-5. Looking to rebound from that. Even if it's not a night where the team score is going to help your NQS, you're looking for some individual or some team performances and some players, some, some gymnasts to break through in their opportunity. Exactly, since she's got some new ones in the lineup and this is where they'll learn the experience of what they need. And in a meet like this with four teams and all the crowd. Now meanwhile, we're with Fisk back on beam. This is their fifth gymnast to go, Aliyah Reed Hammond. Very nice full turn. Front tuck into her back handspring, which is her flight series. Very well connected, very nice. Side aerial, which is a D. Her leap combination, a little bit of a balance, which will be affected. But she did stay on so they can she can get the elements. And her dismount, which is a C, very nice. A fist looking to drop a 9.05 a so far on beam. See what Reed Hammond's score is, freshman from Milwaukee. Very nice uh, double back from Southern Connecticut. Yep, this is Hannah Zebdi, one of their top gymnasts, one of the premier Switch gymnasts ring. in D2. To a jump full, very nice. Second pass was the front lay to a front full. Again, bonus combination for that. Because as we said, they, they all start from a nine four and have to get six tenths to get your 10-0 start value. One must be a D and one must come from connective value, which was what her second pass was. Her third pass, again, a Rudy to a Sassone, which is a D to A. And again, as we said, that if they do a D for the last pass, they get a plus one um, as for another D value. They want to award the gymnast who is doing a D at the end. And so the hardest routine, or the hardest pass, that is, last for Zeb D. And we'll wait on her score coming up in a bit. Now, so far, so good for Southern Connecticut State on floor. Lowest score, a 9-6. And so trying to add to that. And meanwhile, back on beam, here is Liberty Moya. Very nice connection. Front aerial to a back tuck, which is a D to a C. Side semi, which is somewhat differently than a side aerial, but again, a D. Now she did a switch into a shoot jump. Very hard combination. Very clean full turn. And again, she's moving very 
fluently on beam, and that's what the judges want to see. They want to see you take charge of it. Now, Mora is Fisk's best beam worker. Season high of a 9 8 two, five, and very, just puts together another great go routine. Team. That was very good routine, yes. <laughs> and her teammates reward her for it. We'll wait on that score. It's going to be a good one for Mora. Yeah, that was very nice. Now, meanwhile, it's the anchor for Southern Connecticut State on floor, Alexa Melanson. That was a four, two and a half to a front tuck, a little deep squat in the landing. But she will get bonus, but they will take for the execution for the deep squat. And again, they, college gymnasts really know how to perform for the judges, and that's what they like to see. Four and a half front layout, a very nice bonus connection to see to a layout, which was very nice. Last tumbling pass. Again, a Rudy, which is a D. Very nice routine, very clean. Well, we saw Hannah Zebdi before Melanson. Zebdi earned a 975. That should be a good score for Melanson as well. It was the first pass that she had the little stumble, but right. aside from that, it looked clean. Very, very clean, and this was a very nice class. Four and a half to a front layout. And her Rudy was very clean as well. Nice step back, but very controlled. And we were showing you, meanwhile on beam, we were showing you Liberty Mora's anchor leg for Fisk, earned a 9.825. And so with that, Mora matches her season high and gives Fisk a 47-5 to start on beam. And it will be no exhibition gymnast, it appears, for a Southern Connecticut State on floor. We'll head to rotation number two. The Rutgers will head to bars. Michigan with their head coach, Beth Plocky, will head over to beam. And we'll take a break. Big meet here in Piscataway. Rutgers, Michigan, Fisk, and Southern Connecticut State on Big Ten Plus.
Starting the second rotation in Piscataway, a quad meet with Michigan, Rutgers, Fisk, and Southern Connecticut State. You see the scores for rotation number one. Michigan popping with a 49-575, just shy of their season high as a group. Whole bunch of 9-9s in there for the Wolverines as they head over to Beam on rotation two. With Crystal Chalet Norton, Dom Savino. We've talked a lot about how this is a big night at Rutgers for a couple of reasons. They're recognizing national girls and women in sports day, recognizing the 50 year anniversary of Title IX, and also honoring black excellence. As I'm sure you know, this is Black History Month, and we've talked about it. Fisk being here tonight, the first HBCU to sponsor a women's gymnastics team. Now there is the Rutgers head coach, Umi Salim Beasley, who was a trailblazer in her own right one of the first black gymnasts at West Virginia when she was an undergrad there. For the last seven years now, Umi has been working with an organization called Brown Girls Do Gymnastics, and they've been talking with HBCUs across the country, trying to convince athletic directors and college presidents and chancellors to add women's gymnastics as a program. It's been a thing that, that Umi has been doing longer than her time at Rutgers as head coach. Now, of course, everybody knew last year we heard that Fisk would add the program, would be the first to do so. I can, just talking to, to Umi on the phone yesterday, we could hear the pride that she has with Fisk adding the program. And earlier this season, we heard that Talladega College will be the number two HBCU to add a women's gymnastics yes. program. It is great to see this sport growing, and it's cool to see the opportunity for young black gymnasts growing too. Yes, it is, and I think Fr Frisk was the starting point of it, and I think you're going to see more, uh, and, you know, exalt, like come about because of that, just like Tally Gay was doing, and I think there's going to be other black colleges that are going to say, yes, we're going to follow suit, and um, that's wonderful because that's just growing the whole entire sport of gymnastics, which when I, back in my days, we were losing programs. You know, way back when, when I was there, we had a state championship in the state of New Jersey. With We had seven teams from Montclair to Trenton State to Ursinus. So we, I mean, not Ursinus, um, Glassboro. So it, and to see all of them gone and Rutgers is the only one left, this is really neat to see it, you know, more schools coming and bringing it back. Yeah, sport is growing undoubtedly. Right. right. That was interesting. Umi said it felt like we kept running into walls. They'd have good conversations with chancellors and presidents and just could not get them to, to could, could convince them to they knew they just needed one their organization their their group of of uh, people at black brown girls do gymnastics and the coaches and other stakeholders across the country and since fisk has gotten on board it sounds like it's a lot more of schools calling them as opposed to them calling oh schools and trying to get them on board all right, we're ready to go for rotation number two. And you saw Rutgers bars line up here, looking for a big bounce back. Meanwhile, Michigan on beam. This is an event that somehow is their lowest scored so far, still ranking top 20 in the country. That's the lineup they roll out. But, but still, it's, it's stacked with seniors. So they've got a lot of experience, which is what you want to see in your beam routine. So they've had the experience of being on the beam. And it will be Carly Bowman to start it off for the Wolverines. Just saw Bowman pop on bars with a 9.95, one of three the Wolverines had. Nice full turn, which is, what, as we said, a requirement, one of their special requirements. And their special requirements is only two tenths if they're missing it. Very nice flight series, very clean. Very nice leap combination. Again, very nice and fluent. Uh, for Bowman, this is her first year back after a season-ending injury. And the way she's competed this season and tonight, you would not know it. No, you would not. That was a very nice side semi, very clean. And again, she's dominating the beam. As if she's doing it on the floor. And that's what I said that before the judges want to see. She's no pausing. She's going from one skill right into the other, which is a deduction if you have too many pauses. 
And Bowman with a tiny step there. Right, but very nice. The almost stick for Bowman. We'll wait on her score. Even still, it's going to be a good one. Well, meanwhile, for Rutgers, they just opened on bars with Jordan Zeden Weber opening nice. on bars for the second straight meet. Very nice, Toshi. Very nice full and back out. I mean, excuse me, full into a double back. Very clean routine. Very nice. And so we'll wait those leadoff scores. For Michigan, second up is Gabby Wilson. Should acknowledge, too, on the other side for Zeden Weber, who is a senior for this Rutgers team. She debuted for Rutgers in the lineup this season, back on Monday at Penn State, because of an injury. The Rutgers had suffered an injury. Anna Pagliero, one of their gymnasts who's competed in as many as three events, got hurt last Friday at Oregon State. Zeden Weber had to meet Rutgers at the airport, wasn't on the travel roster, so met Rutgers at the airport to join them to Penn State. Went out, earned a 9.65 Monday, and should have a solid score here as well. It's a 9.625. And again, that the experience and the depth and being able to pull someone in that was, you know, with the depth in the lineup. Second up is the freshman, Valentina Lorente Garcia. Very nice. Connection on her first release, but her second release, she's going to have uh, definitely execution errors on that. It wasn't quite a fall, but she didn't complete it. They can give her the bonus connection, but she's going to be hit with execution. Very nice stuff dismount, though. She saved it. That's a good recovery from the freshman. She's shown her poise Wait. at points this season already. Right. Very nice dismount. She came back with a strong dismount, and that's what you want to see. And meanwhile, Gabby Wilson on beam. Very nice jump combination. 180 degree splits. They're beautiful. And you can see the amplitude she got off, off the beam, too. Right, exactly. Very, very precision. Very difficult dismount. It's a double tuck, it's an E, but she had a little bit of a step and didn't open up, so they're going to have to take that deduction, but she will get a bonus back for doing it. Uh, one of the big stories in college gymnastics this season has been the enforced higher degree of difficulty for those dismounts on beam. Right, exactly, and because they, they switch things around that you now have to have a C, where before you could do a side aerial into a B, but they changed it so you must have a C. So they, a lot of the gymnasts had to change what dismount they did. Well, so far for Michigan, Carly Bowman a 9.85 on beam. For Rutgers, our judges finalizing the score for Lorente Garcia. And so in the third spot, Gianna Ortiz waiting to go. Remember, Lorente Garcia had the, the misconnection uh, with the benefit of dropping one score, they'll yes. try to drop hers. And they're definitely going to take execution on that. Well, we have a moment, a little bit more of Gabby Wilson's. And actually, interesting, we missed that earlier. Yes, that was that's going to hurt because she's not going to have her flight series, so that score will probably not count for them. Very nice Pike Yeager from a blind. Overshoot, very nice to a handstand. Nice cast handstand. Nice giant full into a dismount. A nice stick, a little bit of a hop, but very nice routine. Ortiz has had a huge year for Rutgers on beam, a 9.875 earlier this year. And she's come through in a big way. And meanwhile, Nicoletta Kulis is the third gymnast from Michigan, a senior from Long Beach, California. Her flight series, very nice, very clean. We'll turn a little balance error. Again, judges can, can um, take 
half tenths. They do not have to take, they cannot take quarter tenths. They can take half tenths. Very nice jump combination. She prepares for her dismount. I mean, in fact, I got ahead of myself. She did a nice <laughs> cat leap to a side arrow, which is a bonus combination connection, which was very nice. Round off, four and a half, very nice. Very good stuck landing as well. well. Meanwhile, back on bars, that's what we just saw from Gianna Ortiz and Rutgers waiting on her score. Now, there it is, a 9-7. Nicoletta Koulis after Wilson's fall a moment ago in a 9-1-5. Nice it's response. Like nice response, yeah. Just a little bit of a hop. So we had on Koulis' score. That's Aaliyah aired for Rutgers. She's one of those five gymnasts for the Scarlet Knights who is injured today. Got hurt during her floor routine at Penn State. Typically goes all around. Very nice Just competing release. bars. But very nice release. A little short on the handstand. To a dismount. A little bit of steps, but again, but she's got her ankle tight, so that could be something she's a little bit hesitant with. And again, like you said, they they were in Oregon and Penn State, so they've had a tough week of traveling and competing. And I think they're doing an outstanding job. Now you noted it aired, tweaked her foot is what it was described to us during her floor routine last time out, and so not hurt necessarily, but not 100%. Right, and it's it's smart to hold her out because the season is still young. Very nice flight series. And that from Sierra Brooks, one of the three all-arounders for Michigan tonight. And the layout in college is a D. If you do it in age group, it's a C. The college coaches made it a D because it is hard to do. As a senior. <laughs> in college. <laughs> Again, very, very fluent on theme. Front tuck, very clean, no bobbles. Okay, and again, back handspring. Double full, which again is a bonus combination. Again, because the coaches wanted to see other dismounts, so they're they're awarding them for doing that. Now Sierra Brooks was last year's Big Ten gymnast of the year, nine nine five or better on every event this year, and you can sh she yeah, shows you in this why she's good at everything. everything. Yes, she is very clean. Yes, <laughs> very nice. Now before her, Nicoletta Koulis in nine eight seven five. For Gianna Ortiz and Rutgers, it was a 9-7. Still waiting on Aaliyah Aird's score as the fourth gymnast, as Hannah Joyner, the fifth one, is up on the bars. Ready for her release move. Very nice, Jaeger. Passed a handstand a little short, but very nice half turn to handstand. Very nice, that's a D element. Strong dismount, very nice. Hannah Joyner is a gymnast that brings it every single night, and that is apparent once again tonight. Oh, yes, that's a very nice dismount. This is a very beautiful Jaeger as well. Nice high release. And she's above the bar, which the coaches want, I mean, the judges want to see, as well as Umi wants to see. A little bit of a step. So we had on Joyner's score. Before her, Aaliyah Aird earned a 9-5-2-5. Now we're back on beam with Abby High School. We just saw Sierra Brooks here. She earned a 9-8-7-5. Very nice cat leap into a side aerial, which is a combination, A to D.
That is switch leap, switch leap, which is a CC combination, which gets them two connective value points. Very clean layout. Again, very fluent on beam. Very nice stuck dismount. <laughs> Very nice one and a half. A stick to pump up Abby High School, the super senior, a five-time All-American. Another look at this. Nailed it. Very nice, yes. <laughs> the high school season high is a 9.85 on beam. Will that beat it? That's possible. This is Avery Balzer, Rutgers anchor on bars. Nice Jaeger. Nice handstand. Again, nice pack salto. Very clean forms. Very nice handstand. Beautiful. Bingo. Bingo. Nice stuck landing, yes. That should be a very nice score. Avery Balzer's career high, a 9.875, did that earlier this year. Will she have a new one? She's been trying to crack the 9.9s for a while. This was a very nice high rig back uh, layout. And again, a very nice stuck landing. <laughs> and we'll see Balzer later tonight as well on floor. It'll be her first time competing on floor this season. Uh, back to beam, Abby High School earned a 9.95. So she's got a new season high there, and here is Natalie Wojcik. Back in 2019, the national champion on beam. Very nice front here, aerial into a beat jump. Very clean. Very nice jump combination. Switch leap to a jump. Again, all of their beams are very confident, very fluent. Triple series on beam, again, very difficult to do. Uh, gymnasts on beam have to do side, forward, and backward choreographing. So if they don't, they will get a deduction. Again, very nice one and a half stuck landing. Now Wojcik has been commanding the beam since her freshman year, and that continues as a fifth year senior. Very nice combination. And very nice triple series, a little bit of a hip I like a pro there right. from Wojcik. So we'll see how check, but she made it. Now we'll see how she wraps up things for Michigan. They will drop Gabby Wilson's 915. Well, meanwhile on bars, Rutgers is done. Hannah Joyner earned a 9775. And you may have heard a little roar as Wojcik was going on beam. That was because Avery Balzer posted the first 99 on bars of her career. Uh, her Scarlet Knight teammates went crazy. And that's been overdue. She's got excellent bars, so that's great. And at the exhibition, gymnast Caitlin Bertola, who we've seen in lineups this season. Talk about the depth that Rutgers has. Yes. Could see her in the lineup as soon as next week. Exactly, exactly. And it'll be good that they don't have a meet until next Saturday. So they have some downtime to recover their bodies, which will be great for them. And it's a home meet and it's alumni meet, so that'll be even. This is Naomi Morrison competing for Michigan as the alternate gymnast, exhibition gymnasts. So waiting on Wojcik's score. 
Again, very clean layout series. Again, her leap series combo that is required. All of them have very good full turns, and sometimes the full turn can be your nemesis, and it's a requirement. Again, full and a half dismount, which is a C, a little bit of a balance error. So we won't get Morrison's score officially, but a solid routine from her. Now meanwhile, for Fisk, they're on floor. And there. this is their anchor, Zaya Coleman. Very nice full and back out. Did step over the line, so she will have a deduction for that. But again, that's an E element. Very nice leap jump combination. Very dynamic. Front through to double back. Did not have enough really height on that. But again, that's a very difficult pass to put at the last pass. Well, Fisk, only five gymnasts in their floor lineup, which you can do, but that means they won't be able to drop a score. Absolutely. Now you can see Coleman, she wasn't able to rotate that last pass all the way around yeah. and sort of hobbling off. So she landed short, so that is going to hurt her ankles. And that was the first of three events that Coleman's competing in, so something we'll keep an eye on as we go on here. Are supposed to see her on vault and bars, but I saw her shaken up, and that could change. A couple of team scores are in, though. Rutgers on bars earned a 48525. Highlighted by Avery Balzer's career-high 9-9, her first 9-9 of her career. But for Michigan, meanwhile, I'm still waiting on Natalie Wojcik's score to pop up, actually. That well, would have been provided by the judges, but has not shown up officially, so we're waiting on that because they'll be able to drop Gabby Wilson's 9-1-5. So far, Abby High School's 9-9-5 is the big one. Yes, that's a very big one. That was a beautiful routine. It looks like scores are finalizing, and so we will step aside. We'll come back. We'll get the official end of rotation two scores for all the teams. We're still waiting on Coleman's score on floor as well. But we are halfway through this meet, a jam-packed Jersey Mike's Arena, and four great gymnastics programs, Michigan, Rutgers, Fisk, and Southern Connecticut State.
More than halfway through this meet here at Rutgers, a quad meet with Michigan Fisk and Southern Connecticut State. The Wolverines, the number three team in the country, and they are performing like it so far tonight. A yes, season they. high on beam, 49-4-5. Yes, they are. And again, they're very, um, they're very, they're seniors, so they they know what they're doing and they're experienced. Uh, we are celebrating a whole lot tonight, including the 50 years of Title IX. So some gymnastics royalty in the building tonight. <laughs> One of them sitting next to me, Crystal Chalet Norton, and her good friend Linda Burdett Good sitting down there, Matt's side. You see Burdett Good's illustrious resume as her time at West Virginia, nearly four decades as the women's gymnastics coach of the Mountaineers. More than 600 wins, 10 conference titles. She's here tonight not only because she's one of the, the premier early coaches in his sports history, but also because she was the college head coach of both Rutgers head coach, Umi Selene Beasley, and Michigan coach, Bev Plocky, and a good friend of yours as well. Yes, and um, we were in the um, Atlantic 10 together, and then when Rutgers went to the Big East, we couldn't compete anymore in the Atlantic 10, so Linda and I started the Eagle, <laughs> and um, it was like a culmination of a lot of things, but we're the ones that put the eight teams together, and we 
she locked us in a ho the hotel and said, we're going to finish this so we <laughs> get it done. So it's still a strong, Eagle is still a strong league. And, it, you know, it, Linda and I were the founding, you know, founding fathers, as you call it. <laughs> <laughs> so Linda and I go way back. Yeah, well, let's make that completely clear. Eagle Gymnastics, we hear about it. It's been around for decades. Linda and Crystal, two of the big <laughs> reasons why. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, and it's great because now other teams that don't have a conference can get into the Eagle, and that's great because we even got it okayed through the NC2A. So that was huge. So now, That's a big point of pride for uh, Bev Plocky to have her former college head coach here. You saw her line up as they come up on floor. The Wolverines do them in a bit. The Rutgers will be on beam right in front of Burdette Good. Just saw Omi Slim Beasley go and have a chat with her old head coach as well. Rutgers stabilized things, I think, on bars. Right, yes, they did. And now beam is one of their strongest events. Yes, there is, and so is floor. So hopefully that, you know, even though they will have to have a replacement um, for some of them, but I still think they have the depth on floor. Now, one of the gymnasts who is not making her debut, but is uh, not somebody we've seen a lot this year, Jackie Manifold. She's in the third position in the Rutgers beam lineup. And when we talk next woman up, we've mentioned it a couple times already tonight, Manifold was that for Rutgers Monday at Penn State. Talked about how Aaliyah Aird got hurt during her floor routine. Manifold stepped in as the exhibition gymnast, straight into the lineup, earned a career high. And we'll keep an eye on Rutgers on beam. Michigan on floor, Reina Gugino is their leadoff. She prepares for her first pass. Nice double pike, very nice landing. Again, front lay, front full for connective value bonus. The two jump full popas. Again, as we talked about, gymnasts can have three pass routines or they can have two pass routines. So it just depends on what the coach feels is the best for the gymnast. A nice Rudy D at the end. Very clean routine. Very nice. Well, Michigan leads the nation in team floor average. Nobody better than the top-ranked Wolverines on floor. And so we'll wait on Gugino's score to start it off. Meanwhile, this is Braden Batavio. She's the leadoff for Rutgers on beam, wrapping up her routine right here. Very nice dismount. And Lisa is a New Jersey gymnast, has gone through the club programs in the state, and outstanding beam worker. This is how Gugino's nice. floor routine really went. Right, nice, nice Rudy at the end, very clean. Batavio a 9.85, it's her season and career high. Did that last time at home two weeks ago. Very nice just now, maybe a little step. A steadying presence there from Batavio to kick it off as Emily Lease, who we've known for her vault, her Yurchenko one and a half, is making her season debut on beam. She's competed it before, now a junior, so did it as an underclassman. And we'll see her for the first time coming up next. It looks like the score for Reina Gugino is... That was in. Now one judge had a 9-8, the other had a 9-9, but they're going to conference. It looks like their start value is different. Again, you do not have to have the same start value, so that they really do not need to call a conference if they're in range with the scores. And so Nicoletta Koulis on floor will wait, and we get to see Emily Lease on beam.
front tuck to a back handspring. Very difficult to connect, but connected. So she'll get her flight series is what she needs. Plus she'll have a bonus combination for that. Very nice leap combination for bonus. Very nice game routine. Right, a little hop in the end. And again, sometimes you will see if the um, student athlete has does a back handspring layout, she'll have to do another D in it. But because she had a front tuck to a back handspring, she had a bonus combination, so she did not have to do another D. So wait on Lisa's score. And meanwhile, on floor, Reina Gugino earned a 9-9. And Nicoletta Koulis looks to continue the great start for the Wolverines on floor. Bonus combination, which is required. Very well, her, it was a very high double pipe. But however, she didn't open it up in the landing, so that's going to be a five tenths. Oh, so it's an automatic. At five tenths, yeah. Yep. So. So Coolis will be docked. Gugino did earn a 9 9, and so Michigan will aim to drop Coolis's score and continue what's been a great start for them to this meet. I mentioned it last time they were in this building, they had an outstanding night. Let's see if they can do that again. On beam. Here's Jackie Manifold. Just talked about her. Next woman up. That was the title of the story on Rutgers' website for her performance at Penn State, jumping in, posting a career high better than 9.8, a 9.825. Can she do it again tonight? Very nice flight series, very solid. And again, she has the experience having competed last year. Very nice. Again, she had the layout, so she had to have another D in her, in her routine, which she did. Very nice leap combination. Very clean. Very nice. Close to a stuck landing, but very nice routine. Manifold comes through for Rutgers once again. Very nice. Very nice side aerial, cat leap side aerial, and, a, and her dismount, which was front full. And she a little bit, but she pulled her feet together, so I would give it a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she has the crown that Rutgers gives after a stick, and we'll see if the judges score her as so. Uh, Manifold, with the way she's performed this week, could earn herself a more regular spot in the yes. beam lineup. Back to floor, it's Abbey High School going all around tonight for Michigan after Nicoletta Koulis' 9-2. High School looking to get the Wolverines back on track. Again, this is a Michigan team that leads the nation in team floor score. And you see why. Yes, <laughs> that's a very nice Arabian double front and it's an E skill and she does it beautifully.
leap combinations. Very nice, very high. Very nice 2C combinations, which will get her bonus connective value. Very nice. As expected from the super senior Abby High School, who earned a 995 on floor earlier this year and is certainly that caliber gymnast. Now on beam, this is Rutgers Gianna Ortiz in progress after Jackie Manifold just posted a 98. She had a little bobble on her flight series, which is going to be a tenth, tenth and a half. Nice dismount. She's going to have a little bit of the bobble on the flight series. Go back to the passes from high school on floor. That's how she starts her routine. It's out excellent. <laughs> and again, beautiful, as is her jumps. And then her, she's a two-pass routine. Again, she has everything that she needs. Meanwhile, some more of Ortiz's routine on beam. As we heard Crystal mention, a little bit of a bobble. But again, she's, it's a very hard pass that she's doing, so judges do take that into consideration. So we wait on Ortiz's score, and now on floor, Naomi Morrison. After Abby High School's 9-9-2-5. And again, very nice East skill. <laughs> Landed, no steps. And that's the type of tumbling you want from a national level team that's vying for the championship again. Again, front lay, front full, which is her connective value, which she needs in her routine. Again, her jump pass is very nice, very high. Selling it. <laughs> very strong tumbling. <laughs> not too, not too many deductions. Very clean. You, you can see why they're leading floor in the country. Very good. And a couple times there, thought to myself, "Wow." Yes. Good score incoming for Naomi Morrison as Hannah Joyner, Rutgers' best beam worker ever. He's on the beam right now. A little bit of a step, which is going to be it's going to be a deduction, probably one tenth, tenth and a half. We get our recap of Excellent. the fourth spot for Michigan. First, floor, uh, first pass, outstanding, Ian. Very, very difficult. and just floated down out of that double. Very nice. Now meanwhile, Joyner, the one and only Nationals qualifier on beam in Rutgers history. Very clean series. Just the landing, a little bit is gonna be a tenth, tenth and a half on that. Well, let's see, Gianna Ortiz for Rutgers earned a 9.75. Naomi Morrison just earned a 995, which is the best score of the rotation. <laughs> and I can see why. <laughs> it was beautiful. And now Sierra Brooks up next. Big Ten gymnast of the year this past year. Again, full and back out. Beautiful. Again, nice and high.
beautiful leap passes. Standing, <laughs> very nice front through the double tuck and again floated down. Michigan keeps bringing it on floor and Sierra Brooks, a 9.95 earlier this year, is another in store tonight. Meanwhile, Stephanie Zanella is Rutgers anchor on beam after Hannah Joyner's 9.8. Side aerial to a full and a half. Very nice, hard dismount. However, she did have a little hop. Very nice leap combination. Very nice triple series. Just a little hop on the end with a little bit of direction. And it, Excellent first pass. Again, just steps right out of it. It's what you want to see. And as I said before, front through to double at the end is very difficult to do. So for Rutgers, just an exhibition gymnast left. And for Michigan, Sierra Brooks just posted a 9-9-2-5. And so they are their anchor, Gabby Wilson's routine away from dropping the 9-2 from earlier in this rotation and continuing on the great pace they're at for this meet, aiming at another 198 team score. Last time Michigan was here, they had a run of four straight tens. Three of them on vaults, but it started with their anchor, Wilson, on floor. <laughs> and can we repeat it? short on the landing so that's going to be a tenth again very difficult tumbling pass again, a double salto pass which is one of the special requirements Leap combination again, C's to C, which is very nice. Very nice last pass. Very clean, landed right out of it. Uh, may not be a perfect 10 for Gabby Wilson, but it's another yeah. high quality routine. Even though she had a little bobble in the beginning, she came back strong. And that was how exactly. she finished it. Exactly. Right, very nice. Now, meanwhile, Rutgers just had an exhibition gymnast go. Maya Pringle, sophomore. Very clean. Very nice front aerial. And so Umi Selene Beasley gets her group ready for their last rotation. The Scarlet Knights will head to floor. And meanwhile, for Michigan on floor currently, Gabby Wilson just earned a 9.825, and so the Wolverines post a 49.525. For the meet so far, they're at 148.55. So if they're at 49.5 or better on vault, they're headed out of here with another 198.
I have two exhibition gymnasts lined up here. First one is Jenna Mulligan. My first time we're seeing Mulligan tonight. She's a junior. As part of the lineup at regional finals last year on floor as well. Well, again, this is going to give her experience. And get, and have her ready in case somebody has to be replaced. Again, front through the double tuck, very difficult. Again, switch side into her two popas, very clean, which again is a bonus combination. A nice last tumbling pass, which is again a D. A talent up and down and even outside right. the Michigan floor lineup. Very, very, very good lineup and very depth. A lot of excellent gymnasts that she can rely on. Now we are slated to have one more exhibition gymnast too. Natalie Wojcik is slated to go. We'll see if she does. That was on the initial lineups that we got, but I don't think everybody's ready to move on. Now, final scores coming in for rotation number three. And so we'll get those to you in a moment. Everybody's going to move on to their last position. Rutgers to floor, Michigan to vault. Scarlet Knights looking to close out this big February meet. Michigan aiming for a 198 team score. We'll do that next with the fourth rotation here on Big Ten Plus.
to the fourth and final rotation here at Rutgers. You see the team scores through three rotations. Michigan still on pace for a 198 team score. Well, we have some great gymnasts in the building, some outstanding teams, and we have an outrageous turnout at Jersey Mike's Arena tonight. It's been announced as a gymnastics program record. 4,755 fans packed into Jersey Mike's Arena. Most, fan they've, most fans they've ever had in this building for a gymnastics meet. And on a night where we're celebrating 50 years of Title IX and where we've come, cool to see where this sport is headed because more and more people are becoming interested in gymnastics. It's, ex it's exciting, especially to see the student section and how many... <laughs> fans are in there it's outstanding and um, it's great to see and it's great to see that they came to support this outstanding um, four teams that are here and there was several club teams that called off practice and said they had to go to this this meet because it was a record setting and they needed to be here and that's nice to see the New Jersey clubs do that so that was great now they have been treated to some big scores and some Great routines as Rutgers gets ready for its floor lineup. You see it right there. This is Rutgers' second best event just by average score. A couple of 9-9s nine sprinkled through there. Avery Balzer making her debut in the floor lineup this year. Meanwhile on vaults, Michigan the number two vaulting team. They have Sierra Brooks who won the Big Ten vault title last year, but they're just trying to close out another big score. Exactly, and again, they're juniors and seniors, so they're experienced. They've they've performed these vaults, so they know where they are. It's, you know, so we could possibly see tens again. That was how it started a year ago when Michigan came here. Each of their first three gymnasts posted ten O's on vaults, made for a really exciting night. And no doubt, one of the reasons why folks are in the building tonight is to see. Rutgers in Michigan and see if any more tens are in store tonight. And what's strong about Michigan is they all have 10 old vaults. So that's, and if they stick it, then, you know, <laughs> that helps because a lot of, most of the teams are starting from a 995, so you can't possibly get that perfect 10. That means it's your Chenko one and a half across the, the yes, lineup. Right. You know, it's remarkable too. I look around this building, we've shown you all the shots of all the fans here. Not only is that the case tonight in Piscataway, New Jersey, but if you turn on the TV or you pull up your computer and you watch a gymnastics meet at schools big and small across the country, what we're seeing here tonight and have seen throughout the season with the great turnout is a story that's cropping up across the country this year. Yes, it is, and it's, you know, it's gotten stronger. And um, you know, now that you have high level gymnasts, Olympians competing, like Sunny Lee, so it's like, it's great to see. You know, it shows that you can do Olympics and then still do college, which is great. Well, that was one more practice go for Michigan as we get set for the real thing. I got faked out there for a sec. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, back to your point, though, we you mentioned the, the idea of Olympians competing for their college teams, something that's uh, been brought about by the advent of NIL in college athletics. And yes, and you're seeing more and more that are doing that, you know, and they like the team camaraderie, you know, and then they can still go back and do Olympics again if they want. So that's what's so great about it. And what's good is it's, you know, they used to be they used to compete every day, every week. So when they go to the Olympics and they're on that team, they're you know they're 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 good because they're used to that volume of competition over maybe somebody who only competes four or five times. Yeah, it's as good a year as it's been in college gymnastics, and another big meet closing out tonight. Stephanie Zanella, Rutgers leadoff on floor. Double tuck, a little back step, so that could be a half a tenth. But she did not step out of bounds. Mm -hmm. 
whip through to a full, very nice combination. As I said, you have to have a double salto pass, which she does, and connect a value with it. Very nice last pass. A little, could have been a little bit higher, but still very nice. A nice way to start for Zanella, somebody who has had a fall in each of her last two floor routines, both of them coming last weekend. But she's a mainstay in the floor lineup, and she shows you why right there yeah. because she's got it figured out. Yes, she does. And it's nice to have the start out, you know, hit her routine because then they know, you know, the pressure's off a little bit for the rest of them. A deep breath for Zanella. Meanwhile, we go to Vault. That's the second one up for Michigan. Very nice Vault. Little bit of a step. Actually, a last minute change. Natalie Voyek is in a two spot. Now, this was their leadoff. Reina Gugino, she wasn't able to turn this all the way around. Oh, yeah, that's, that's going to hurt. That's. A five and lack of height. So again, Michigan will look to drop with Gino's score and Wojcik. Very, ni very nice, through. very nice. A little bit of a step, but very nice. Very clean. So it's a 9-3-5 for Gugino. It's a 9-9-2-5 for Wojcik steadying the ship. Avery Balzer set to go for Rutgers in her four day her floor debut this season. And for Michigan, it's Gabby Wilson set to go in the third spot. Again, the Wolverines, the number two vaulting team in the country. They've got the Big Ten vault champion. And for a team that's third in the country in total score, on pace for another 198 team score with a good rotation here. Good meaning 49-5 or better. Which I'm sure they can get. <laughs> so we will show you Gabby Wilson's vault in a bit. We'll give you Avery Balzer's floor routine live. Nice double back, nice control on her landing. Again, her leap combination, very clean. Front leg very clean for her last pass. Excuse me, that was her middle pass. Okay, Rudy, which is a D, a little step forward, so that will be a deduction. But again. A balls are mm -hmm. stepping into the floor lineup right. and providing a quality score for Rutgers. Yes. Already a big night for her, too, after the 9-9, a career high on bars. Meanwhile, the fourth one for Michigan on vault. Now that is only a 9-9-5 start, so that's going to be a little bit lower, plus she had the step. Now this was a moment ago 
very nice ball. Just a little hop on the side. You didn't have a directional. Yeah, Gabby Wilson posting a 9975 for that vault. And this was Jenna Mulligan. She was a late addition to the vault lineup with her 995 Rachenko full. Okay, and again, a little bit of a step. And Balzer, meanwhile, the three passes that she just mm -hmm. put together. Very nice. Double back, and then she has her full front, full front play, which is very clean. And then her last pass was the Rudy, which was a little short, so she's going to be get a step of tenth or two on that. Now, meanwhile, back to vaults, and the fifth one, Sierra Brooks. Very nice vault. A little bit to the direction, but she wasn't over the line. And again, the judge wants to see you in the middle of the uh, of the vault. Now you saw her teammates chanting 10. We'll see if the judges give it to her. Meanwhile on floor, Maya Jones, her floor debut this season. Very nice double, double tuck pike, I mean. Very clean, nice landing. Now that roar is, just, is because they just gave Sierra Brooks a 10-0 for her vault. We'll get back to it in a moment as we wrap up Maya Jones's floor routine. That was very nice. It was a combination with a Rudy. A little, little bobble there. Full front lay, a little bit of hesitation and step on the landing, but completed it. So Jones fights through it on floor. Meanwhile, on vault, Michigan wrapped up their meet in perfect fashion. Back-to-back -back tens for Sierra Brooks and Abby High School. Get to it after the passes for Very Maya nice. Jones. Very nice. Okay, she's a little short on this, but she needed her chest up, so that's a tenth, tenth and a half. And then her last pass, she was a little short again, so she's gonna be a tenth to a tenth and a half, depending on what the judges take. This is what we had on vault a moment ago. Sierra Brooks was first. Her third 10 on vault in her career. Very nice. Now the judges thought about that one for a moment. Abby High School, the anchor, with her second 10 on uh, vault. Yeah. They turned around the cards immediately. It was beautiful. Yes. And so Michigan closes the meet. They will have an exhibition gymnast, but they close with a 198-3-0. A little bit, that, that's a 9.95, a little bit of a hop. And that from Kaylin Morgan as an exhibition gymnast, a freshman. So Michigan, for the second straight season, comes to Rutgers and earns some tens on vault. <laughs> She's going to want to come here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, meanwhile, back to floor for Rutgers. This is their fourth gymnast, Emily Wood. After Maya Jones just earned a 9-8, the second straight 9-8 in this lineup for the Knights. Very nice pass. Very fluent and blended right out of it. Beautiful jump series. The judges look for height and making sure they get completely around in their series, which she did. And a front double.
double full, which is an E, very difficult to land. And as your last pass. Very nice, very nice. Uh, Emily Woods in a good spot on floor, had a season high 9.85 last weekend, and trying to continue her upward trajectory. Wait on the junior score. Very beautiful first pass, no deductions. And the last pass is a front double full, which is an E, which is very good too. It's, and again, last pass is very difficult to do. The Wood score coming up. Hannah Joyner, Emily Lee still to go for Rutgers. And that's Fisk on bars. Very nice pulling back out. Top score for Fisk on bars so far, a 9-1-2-5. I came on the fourth routine from Zanna Brewer. Let's catch our breath and see what, <laughs> get to what just happened the last couple of moments. So for Rutgers on floor, back-to-back 9-8s, Avery Balzer, Maya Jones, both of whom are making their season debut on floor. Scores in for Emily Wood, season high 9875. And while all that was transpiring, <laughs> Michigan on vault, tens from Brooks in high school. Uh, outstanding, outstanding. And that's, it's so great because the Big Ten is a great conference and has some great um, teams in it. And it's a, you know, it's wonderful to be in it. I mean, I like the Eagle, but this is, this is you know, this <laughs> is top of the notch. And this is where you want to be. Should mention too with those back-to-back -back tens to close it for Michigan. Their team score a 49-7-5 on vaults. That is the best vault score of the season for any team. Oh, wonderful. So she'll turn heads when uh, the, the rankings come out on Monday. <laughs> And now Hannah Joyner. Okay, double tight, a little tenth, maybe half a tenth on the landing. Very nice leap. Very complete all the way around. A double salto pass, which is required. Very clean. A bonus leap combination, which is C to C. One and a half to a front pike, very clean. Very nice routine, very clean. And what they needed. Uh, Hannah Joyner has a career high of 9.95. She's been just shy of 9.9s twice this year. She had that, as you mentioned, maybe, maybe half, half tenth or tenth. 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 Right, and that pass was complete, very nice. And this is her last pass, which was also very nice. That was very cool. And so we'll see where Joyner fits in here for Rutgers. Definitely closing the meet with, with their the best difference. rotation. Exactly, exactly. And they're each, each routine is like building on the next one, which is really what you want. Again, this is a Rutgers team that if you compare their preseason lineups to today's lineups, they're missing more than half their routines with five different gymnasts injured. Had a couple injured at the start of the season, or before the season, I should say, but fighting through it tonight. Yeah, but what has happened is the depth that she has, she's able to put somebody in, and that, that lineup is not going to you know, dwindle. It's not going to, it's not a little, maybe a little beep, but not all. 
It's been an improving night tonight for Rutgers, too, as they go along. It's a 9-9 for Hannah Joyner. It's her season high on floor for the Rutgers two-year captain. Emily Lease earned a 9-9 earlier this season on floor. See if she can do that again. The Scarlet Knights are into the 49s on floor. This is definitely their best rotation yes. of the night. She stepped out of bounds, so the judge caught it. So that's an automatic one-tenth Tenth, deduction. Yes, yes. She was close, and I was watching it. The full and back out was very nice, a little, maybe half a tenth. But again, that's a very difficult move to do. Again, very nice front three to double tuck, very pretty. Very nice routine, too bad she had to step out. And again, that's gonna be a 10th off the score and sometimes you can win and lose a meet by just something like that. But it was very nice. Very nice full and back out. But the trouble is, she stepped out of bounds before she started her pass. But again, very nice comeback for the Rutgers gymnast, especially on floor. The Rutgers still with the second half of its season to go. This is actually the midway point for the Scarlet Knights. Their seventh meet of 13 total guaranteed, including the Big Ten Championships. Now, while it might not be the team score they want to include in their NQS when that comes out shortly, certainly proof to them that they can fight through some of the adversity they've been faced with this season. Yes, exactly, exactly. And yes, maybe that's not the score that, you know, it's going to help them that way. But again, she gets some of her athletes back and healthy, you know, going down the road. It's going to, you know, go to the next, she'll go to the next high score again like she had with 195. Well, there are some good takeaways for Rutgers. Regardless of what Lisa's score is here, Rutgers posts a season-high tying 49-1-5 on floor, including Hannah Joyner's season-high of a 9-9. Also popped a 9-9 with Avery Balzer's first ever on her best event, Bars. So things to build off of. Now, meanwhile, the winner of the, the meet, though, tonight, coming home with three victories, including a Big Ten win, Michigan, the number three team in the country, stays in that position with a 198-3-0. It's the second best team score of the season across the country. Well, that's that's outstanding. And Michigan, you know, they're talking about the fact that she could, you know, probably uh, make a run for a national championship again. Uh, you look at their lineups, I don't think they counted anything lower than a 9-8-2-5 tonight, the Wolverines. That's a mark of a pretty good team. Yeah, right. Well, I think it's because she has so many seniors and the depth and the juniors. That is, you know, she's building on that. that. So I think you're going to see her one or two and possibly three in the country at the end of this whole thing. <laughs> she's that strong. Michigan is the number three team as it stands tonight. We'll see where they stand Monday. They do go home with a pair of 10 O's for Sierra Brooks and Abbey High School. Their last two routines, both on vault. They go home with three victories tonight. We knew it would be a fun night 
a program record for Rutgers in terms of attendance. So many things to celebrate tonight. Title IX, Black History Month. Having Fisk here, a program that Umi Salim Beasley helped build. Yes. The leotards that Rutgers, Rutgers wore, wore. Yeah. and all the, the bedazzle that, that they have made for quite a fun, fun night. A fun night, it really was. And, you know, it's outstanding that so many people came to watch this which is, you know, it proves that Rutgers Gymnastics is on the rise and people want to see it, and the state supports it, which is great. And we will carry the awards ceremony coming up in just a few minutes. Tip of the hat to our crew, led by Mark D'Agostino, Maria Kiros, and Colin Osborne, all of our students, for putting this broadcast together on a very busy weekend at Rutgers Athletics. Did a great job at a very busy quad meet, no less. There are the final scores, Michigan, takes the cake. Lowest one of 49-4-5. They were outstanding yeah, they, tonight. They were certainly outstanding and they, you know, they're an outstanding team and they're going to be somebody to beat for a national championship. And that'll do it here from Piscataway for Crystal Chalet Norton, the rest of our crew. I'm Dom Savino saying so long. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night. Again, the award ceremony coming up next here from Piscataway.
Please rise for the Brooklyn University Ball of 